welcome back to Venus Aquatics. So we're stopping off today to pick up a special order fish at my favorite local fish store, Fishbowl Pets in Stanford, Connecticut. I'm going to pull around back and make my way in. As I make my way to the store, I just want to take a second to thank everybody who's been watching my videos. Thank you for all the great comments. And thank you for the not-so-great comments. It's the only way I'm going to get better. But let's get back to the story. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm getting a new fish, I feel like a kid on Christmas morning. Oh, my God. There he is. That's the fish that I've been waiting, seems like, months for. A Fajaca Puffer. Look at him. It is such a beautiful fish. I am so happy right now. I almost want to kiss this fish. Here we have some other puffers. Looks like six spotted puffers. Which are the freshwater to brackish water type. Unlike the white spotted puffer that was in my other video. The purely salt water type. Oh, I really do like puffers. Now this, this is a beautiful dog face puffer. He's got a really nice body on him. He's completely saltwater fish and he's quite aggressive. So that's why he's in this little crate here. But this is another beautiful fish. Are you like me? and walk around in zigzags in the fish store because you keep going back to fish that you see, that you want to take home, you just don't know what you would do with them or where you would put them, or is that just me? Let me know in the comments down below. Look at this freshwater snail, guys. That is quite interesting. I gotta be honest, I'm gonna come back and get me a couple of these. Now, for all you cichlid lovers out there, I just saw this beautiful tank filled up with these colorful cichlids. I just had to show them to you. I know Easter may have passed, but I just wanted to show you the cute little bunnies they have here. They're very cute. Not something I would take home myself because I think I already have enough pets, but they are very cute. Now the moment of truth. I'm gonna let Tony bag up my fish while I look around a little bit more and show you guys something really interesting I saw. A good tip. Notice the airlines. Notice the pads on the airlines. Those pads are the same pads you put in your HOB and canister filters. What they do is they remove ammonia and they remove toxins like heavy metals. So what's going on here is you know that koi and large goldfish produce a lot of ammonia. And when you attach these to the airline and you get the air to pass through it, you remove a lot of that ammonia. I did not know that. If you found that tip interesting or you're enjoying this video please hit that like button hit that subscribe button ring that notification bell and please share this video anywhere you want to thank you for watching let's continue it's time to say goodbye to our local fish store but i'll be back of course i'll be back once again Fishbowl Pets in Stanford. If you're in the neighborhood, go check them out. You won't be disappointed. We're back in the top secret underground fish room. I've got the puffer in this bag. You notice there's an extra paper bag. Some fish like to bite right through the bag. So if you're going to take one of those home, it's good to have a double bag like this. I'm going to let it temperature acclimate right now. 
while I get my bucket ready so I can drip acclimate him afterward. Now, the big problem is, as you'll notice, I still have all the goldfish in this tank. The goldfish that are eventually going to go into my pond. So, what I'm going to have to do is net them all out and put them in another tank. I've removed the bags so we can see what the puffer looks like. He seems fired up to me. So, I'm going to put him in a bucket and drip acclimate him now. There. So, I've netted out all the goldfish but two that are really stubborn. And I got to kind of take a break for a minute. Because you know how frustrating it gets trying to get those last two fish without ripping the whole tank apart. So, what I did was underneath this tank, I put a 10-gallon. Simple sponge filter. Uh... It's been used. It's already seeded. I put a little battery-operated light on top for now. Because that's all I could find. And I used the water from an existing tank. Well, half of the water. And then I did a water change on that tank. I released the puffer. And if you look real close, you can see his little eye through the hole of the decoration. Because he's going to be camera shy right now. He was swimming around before. But then I took the camera. And now he's hiding. Giving me the old one eye. So let's see if we can get him out. To show you guys. What a beautiful fish this is. Now he's out. Now we can see him. Thank you my little fish friend. Now I wanted to tell you two things. Before I just let you look at the fish. One, don't use a net to take a puffer from tank to tank. Always have them in water. Use a container or something. That's what I did. I didn't have an extra hand to film it. But trust me, I took a container and then I poured them in. Second thing I want to tell you is if you're watching this video and you're thinking you want one of these fish, let me give you a heads up. This is a Nile puffer or a Fajaca puffer. It's a tropical freshwater puffer. Doesn't really like brackish water. But it's also very aggressive. And it will grow very large, over a foot in time. It's a species-only tank. You really don't want to have anything in the tank with this guy. That's what the wholesaler said. That's what everybody says. But that's fine by me. I'm going to let him grow. When it's time for a bigger tank, we'll get him a bigger tank. He's only about four inches right now. He's a beautiful fish. But like I said, they're very aggressive. They also produce a lot of waste. So you're going to want to have very ample filtration. And they're a tropical fish. So you got to make sure your temperature is right too. Now this is one of the second biggest next to the Mabu puffer for freshwater puffer fish. And you're gonna have to feed him some shrimp, some clams, something hard to file his teeth down like the other puffers or his teeth are gonna outgrow his head. So I already have some clams on a half shell and some shrimp just waiting for him. But enough about me. Why don't you just enjoy this beautiful fish? The Pahaka puffer. He needs a name. Maybe he can be the mascot. Oh, Buster's going to get upset about that. Now, before you say anything in the comments down below, I'm aware I'm probably going to have to get rid of all the plastic plants because this puffer is going to bite into them and spit little pieces of plastic everywhere. I'm fully aware of that. I'll probably do that later tonight. I just want them to get comfortable first. But if you have any ideas on what kind of plants that could survive with this puffer, leave some comments down below. <laughs> 